Welcome to Friday, the day of Passover week when Jesus was brought to trial, a railroad trial, a fake trial. Both the religious and civil authorities tried Jesus. The religious authorities accused him and condemned him for blasphemy, that is making himself equal with God. In order to get the attention of civil authorities, they had to accuse him of rebellion and treason to Caesar by saying that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Our passage today is John 19, 14 to 22. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified, and so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him, two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and this sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written what I have written. Just a few days before, Jesus rode into the city to the acclamation and praise of the crowd, Hosanna, here's the Messiah, the King of Israel. The Jewish people had been longing for, anticipating the Messiah for hundreds of years. Their picture of the Messiah was one who would wield earthly power. He would be a king who would come and conquer and avenge Israel against their enemies, as well as providing prosperity and wealth. What image do we have when we think of a king? Wasn't Jesus a king? After all, he is our creator. He's the power of God's word. He's our savior. Yet God chose to prevent a very different kind of king in Jesus. He presented a servant king, one who serves, who forgives, who loves so completely that he provides a way for us to have peace with God. That isn't the way things work in this world at all, is it? In our John passage, Pilate presents him to the people as their king, whether unwittingly or not, he was doing God's will in that moment by providing the information and the choice to the people. Their reaction was rejection. They rejected him as king because he didn't meet their expectations, their preconceived notions of, of this earthly king who would, would raise Israel to national prominence. You know, even as Jesus hung on that cross, he was being proclaimed as king, whether he was rejected by the people or not. That sign hung there that said, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. And to the very last, the leaders rejected that as they said, you've got to write that that's what he claimed to be. Well, Jesus came to establish a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. It does tell us in scripture that he will come again and that at that time his earthly kingdom will be established until then we are in his spiritual kingdom if we claim him as king. What kind of king do we have? Well the scripture is full of glorious descriptions of who Jesus is as king. One who loves us completely, who forgives and justifies, he promises to share our burdens. Philippians 2 5 to 11 is a fabulous picture of a servant king. Go read it again. The question I'd like to leave you with is, is Jesus your king?